Right now there are some seriously bad graphics cards available on Amazon, but what's the worst rated? As you might have guessed, it's this. So this is the NVIDIA GeForce 210. It's currently rated as one of the worst graphics cards available on Amazon. There are many listings of these that I get loads of 1 star ratings, and I don't blame them. Just look at this, PCI Express is a new generation of bus interface. Bro, PCI Express has been around since like the early 2000s. Although this card was released in 2009, so it's not that long after. But it does seem like these sellers would just write anything to try and get you to buy it. Probably because they know that no person that knows a little bit about computers is going to buy this graphics card. So this graphics card has a huge 1GB of DDR3 memory, 4 ROPs, 8 texture units, 16 CUDA cores, and a GPU clock of 1589MHz. For the I.O. we have 1 HDMI, 1 DVI, and 1 VGA. So that's how you know this is quite old. If your card still has VGA, then you should really get a new card. Like seriously. So I actually didn't buy this card from Amazon because there's no way I'm paying $70 for something I can buy for $10 elsewhere and it's literally the same thing. So I ended up paying around $10 including postage for this GeForce 210. In the next part, I'm going to show you the benchmarks and why you should never buy this card, at least for gaming. So let's start off with Tomb Raider from 2013, not Tomb Raider 1 as some people may think. So we got a low setting 720p where we got an average of 14.2 fps. We also got a 1% low of 11.1 .1 and a 0.1% low of 9.6. So this indicates there wasn't too much stuttering when compared to the average fps, but it wasn't really playable. So this already shows the gaming performance is not great. But let's bring in the integrated Intel HD 4600 graphics for a comparison. So when using the Intel integrated graphics, we got an average of 59.3 FPS using the exact same settings. We got a 1% low of 45.9 and a 0.1% low of 44.6. So this is very playable and we could even turn up the settings more if we wished to. The differences in performance between the two is like day and night with a 317% increase in average FPS. And it's not like the CPU I'm using is that good, it was released in 2013 and it still performs better than the GeForce 210. And you can see this trend in all the other games we tested. For instance, in GTA 5 low settings at 720p, we got an average of 11.2 FPS for the GeForce 210, whereas the Intel HD got 33.9 FPS. The 1% and 0.1% lows for the GeForce 210 was 7.3 and 6.0 respectively, and we got 21.4 and 19.8 for the Intel HD graphics. So this shows how much stuttering and lag there was with the GeForce 210. Another reason why you shouldn't buy this graphics card is because it doesn't support DirectX 11. That means most modern games won't even work. But will it run Crisis? Yes, if you consider 14 FPS playable. However, the Intel HD graphics did achieve a 52.7 average FPS. So this completely dominates the GeForce 210 here. So let's try some games that the GeForce 210 might be able to handle. So first up we have the original Half-Life where the 210 got an average FPS of 25.6 and the Intel HD got 74.7. So in this case the 210 can handle this game at 1080p at a playable FPS. The 1% and 0.1% lows were 5.8 and 2.4 for the 210. So there's quite a bit of stuttering which also happened with the Intel HD graphics but not to the same extent. It had a 1% low of 61.2 and a 0.1% low of just 5.8. In Left 4 Dead 2, the 210 achieved an OK 21.3 FPS in comparison to the 61.7 FPS of the integrated graphics. The 1% low and 0.1% lows for the 210 were not too bad either, at 16.8 and 15.9 FPS respectively. So the game was fairly smooth for the most part and playable on the GeForce 210. The integrated graphics obviously did a lot better and was more smooth as expected. Finally, we ran one of the only tests that supports the GeForce 210 on 3D Mark, and we got a graphics score of 1470. The same test gave us 7540 with the integrated graphics. That's over 5 times the graphics score in case you're wondering. So overall, this graphics card is not worth getting as it doesn't support newer games due to its lack of DirectX 11. Furthermore, pretty much any integrated graphics will perform better than this GPU, and that's saying something because integrated graphics are not known to be good. The only time I can see this really being used is for a PC that needs graphic display connectors but doesn't have integrated graphics, so maybe like a server of some sort. But I did find a use for it in the end. Now that's better. Subscribe please.